I record this. Welcome everyone. This is um, just what I'm going to do. I'm going to go through the main oils um, and rather than go through, you know, this is what's in lavender and blah, blah, blah. What I prefer to do is I prefer to be very practical. So I'm just going to go through the main ways that I use these oils. Um, so hopefully you can pick up some tips in that. I got started with these oils in July. It'll be my three-year um, membership renewal. And we got started, I'm very honest, I got started because my son, he suffered quite, he's always been quite sensitive um, and he always will be that sensitive type child. But he went through an incident at school and um, he was suffering very bad anxiety and he wasn't sleeping well. So I called out to a friend, Emma, um, and I just wanted an oil to help him help him go to sleep because I thought if he could get a decent night's sleep, then the following day he would be more equipped to deal with it all. So we started with one oil, um, Lavender Peace or Serenity, and that um, we started, um, uh, he was quite sensitive, so we just popped it on his pyjama top. Um, and to cut a very long story short, he's absolutely fine. Um, they wanted to medicate him and we never went down that, that path. I actually, we got him into um, a really good psychologist and combined with the oils, he never needed medication. He's still sensitive, um, but he got through it fine. And that one oil has now turned into hundreds of oils you can probably see behind me there's doTERRA boxes that haven't even been opened because I've got so many oils so that's how my journey started and I really only started sharing them with other people because people were asking me what we were using so it was never my um intention to end up with hundreds of oils and building a big business from this um why doTERRA? Again, I'm perfectly honest. I chose doTERRA because I contacted my friend Emma and she said, use this oil. So um, that's what I did. I, li I listened to her because I trusted her. Um, so that's why I chose doTERRA. What I do now know is, now know is that um, there's a lot of oils out there that claim to be pure and 100% but in some circumstances they're not actually because the labeling laws in Australia in particular are very lax um, so things can be called pure um, and you often see um, on the bottle that they've been watered down with witch hazels often on them um, or they're an inferior quality I'm not going to go into all of the science. I'm not a science person. If you want to know about the science and the testing and that, there's heaps of websites and there's other people that um, are good at all of that. But I can guarantee that these oils are pristine and pure and they're exactly what um, they say that they are. Something like peppermint, one drop is equivalent in potency to, you know, 28 cups of peppermint tea. So you're dealing with very pure, potent oils. And if you were standing in front of me now, I would open the peppermint bottle and you'd be able to smell it. That's how pure they are. Um, they go through heaps of testing um, to ensure that there's no chemicals or um, inferior you know, that they're of not inferior quality in that. So rest assured that you are getting pure, 100% pure essential oils. And for me, I'm um, more than happy to use them on my kids, um, my family and recommend them because I know how much testing goes on. Now, I don't know who is brand new and how much you know about oils or whether you popped on this to see how, how I run an intro class. Um, whatever the reason is, um, I'm going to tell you regardless that there's three ways of using essential oils. And the first way is aromatically. So when I got my lavender piece, I was ready to chuck it in my oil burner. And Emma said, you've got to put that in your diffuser. And I'm like, what is a, I've only got an oil burner. No, 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 you can't put that oil in the oil burner. Like they're way outdated in that. So gone are the oil burners. 
Um, and don't put doTERRA essential oils in your oil burners because you're, you're actually, by heating up those oils in an oil burner, you're potentially changing the properties of the oil. And I don't know, I mean, we all had oil burners. That's all we had. But do you, did anyone actually get the black? You know, underneath the glass where the candle is, it used to go black on mine. So that's how hot the, <laughs> that, that little oil burner is heating up the oils. So oil burners and doTERRA essential oils is not a good combination. Instead, these days we have diffusers. And a lot of us have more than one diffuser. We have lots of diffusers. And how diffusers work is this is the little doTERRA pedal one. So all you do is you pop your water in here and you put your essential oil in. And that little thing works on ultrasonic technology, which is basically very high sound vibration. And it pushes the essential oils throughout the air. The beautiful thing about it is that it's not heat. So you're not affecting the composition of the essential oils that you're using but from a safety perspective especially with kids it is so much safer um so my kids will literally come up and put you know sniff what's in there and i know that it's safe i know that i can put them on at night in their bedrooms um, and not have to worry you know today i posted about having the old um vix vaporizer that would heat up so much i would be in there checking it all the time because I was worried something would happen. With these diffusers, you don't have to worry about it. They either are, t are on a time basis, so the doTERRA one is a time basis, so you've got a one hour, two hour, and four hour setting, or some of the other ones that you can get from independent companies um, that are, or they, they're based on the water. So they'll go until the water runs out. The water will never fully run out. There will always be a tiny bit of water left. And that's just a safety feature. But they do just, they just um, turn off at night. So you can pop them on at night and not have to worry. So that's how the main way you use the oils aromatically. I love diffusers because they're a really easy way of of, I've got some interruption, I'm just going to, they're a really easy way of getting the oils um, through, they're, they're an easy way of reaching a lot of people in the house. So you can have your diffuser going and they're reaching everyone. And the really good thing is they're reaching those skeptics as well. Because sometimes you have skeptics in your house. So if you put the diffuser on, they just think that it's a nice smelling um, oil, but it's actually doing a lot more behind the scenes. So if you've got something like On Guard in there, which is our um, protective blend, what it's doing is it's actually helping to... Um, I'm trying to remain compliant here because I am recording it. It's neutralizing airborne pathogens. So something like that is helping with all of those germs that are floating around. If you put something like elevation, which helps um, with sad feelings, it can actually help elevate mood. So a diffuse is a really awesome way of using oils and reaching a whole heap of people. You can also use these oils aromatically by simply popping a drop of whatever oil in your hand and taking, you know, a deep breath in. Um, that's a really easy way if you're out and about of using them as well. Really good for things like peppermint um, and easier when you're trying to clear that respiratory system. So aromatically is the first way. The second way that you can use these oils is topically on the skin. Now, the oils are strong because they're pure. So when you're using these oils, we highly recommend that you dilute them in some type of carrier oil so that you're not just chucking them on the skin. Some of the oils can go straight on the skin and it's up to you whether you want to use them that way. Personally, I tend to dilute most of them. Um, if my child is out and gets stung by a bee, then I'm going to grab my lavender and not worry about diluting it on the spot. 
But day to day, I am diluting my oils. And that's because firstly, they're strong. And secondly, it gets absorbed better into the body. How you dilute is entirely up to you. Um, I am what you use. I do love um, fractionated coconut oil. And fractionated coconut oil is coconut oil. And all they've done is they've removed some of the fatty chain acids. So normal coconut oil would solidify in the cold. So if I went to my cupboard right now, my normal coconut oil is probably solid. And that makes it a pain to work with if you're using rollers and that in particular because you've got solid coconut oil in there. So fractionated coconut oil is just like coconut oil, but it doesn't solidify. So you can use it, it's ready to be used all the time. I love it because it doesn't smell either, and I find it quite absorbent. So that's my choice of carrier. You can, do, this is the doTERRA one, it's $16.50 for this amount. What I recommend is just start with a bottle of this if you're new. And if you really are using a lot of co fractionated coconut oil and you, you, you're, you, know, you want to keep using a lot, you can buy it in bulk from other places in like litres and two litres and even bigger. I find that the quality isn't as good, um, but that if you want to buy it in bulk down the track, that is, that is something that can be done. Um, other carrier oils that people use, I also use a lot of sweet almond oil and I like that on my body. So if I'm moisturising my body. Just be aware that if you're using sweet almond oil in your rollers and whatever, be careful of um, kids in particular with nut allergies. So don't, they can't go to school with kids or whatever. Some other carrier oils that people use are grapeseed oil. If you just want something quick from the supermarket, I find that a little bit slimy. Um, I've got people that use olive oil. I personally, can't do olive oil. <laughs> I think it's smelly and um, it's very thick and it leaves a bit of a residue, but each to their own. The other thing you can use is like a plain lotion. So, you know, your QB lotion or doTERRA do an uns unscented lotion. And basically, I dilute very simple. There is so much talk about there, out there about this is the right, this is the wrong dilution, and it becomes too complicated and overwhelming and it's not what the oils are about these oils are safe and really all you have to do is squirt a little bit of your carrier oil you know a few drops grab whatever oil it is i'm not going to put peppermint on at the moment because that'll keep you awake but rub it and then put it wherever you want if it's on if you're applying to your feet or whatever it doesn't have to be complicated um, and just be aware that if you are brand new, um, you're going to be supported anyway. So in our team, all of our members get a welcome pack with recipes and it tells you exactly how much we recommend that you put in rollers and that. For um, kids, I always add a bit more carrier oil. And for babies, be careful with babies. I've got really sensitive skin, so I do a decent amount. Um, one drop of oil and like a tablespoon of coconut oil if I'm putting it on, if it's being used on a baby. If you, um, if you don't want to do it in your hands, you can do it in, I've got a little bowl, you can do that. As mums, busy mums, a lot of mums like to make some stuff up as it's easier. Um, and I've got some spritzes made up just so I don't have to keep, uh, ones that we use all the time. Um, so something like this is ready made up there for us. Um, and then I don't have to make it up every time. So that's another option. You've got rollers as well. Um, but as you go along, you will learn all of that. Um, doTERRA do actually have specific guidelines for oils um, and how much they recommend you dilute them, the optimal dilution rates as well. And that guideline is available as well um, for anyone that wants that. It's actually at the back of the product guide and there's a guideline as well that we can get to you. Now, because doTERRA oils are 100% pure, some of them, not all of them, can actually be used internally if you feel comfortable with that. I use um, 
things like our tummy blend internally. Um, and But with my kids, I prefer, it's my personal preference, I don't give them the oils to take internally for things like tummy aches and that. I just feel personally that I feel more comfortable using them topically on my children. I believe that they'll have the same effect for children. When it comes to like food and that, if I put some wild orange in some chocolate or something, I'm more than happy for them to eat that. That's just my personal view. There's, um, there's definitely no um, right or wrong with this again. When you are using your oils internally, you can either, which is the slack way, which is how I do it, I literally have a little glass, I add a bit of water. If I've, say, got a tummy ache and I want a bit of digestion, I'll put one drop in, I'll drink it quickly, and then I'll follow with more water. That is the quick way to do it. The more complicated way to do it is to get some empty, and this is perfectly fine as well, empty veggie caps. You can get them from doTERRA America or you can order them in at your chemist or health food shops. Um, and what you do is you open them up. They're just empty capsules. Fill your oils in with it um, and you take it as a capsule. If you're having something hot like oregano, I would definitely recommend doing it in a capsule rather than water or you can potentially burn, burn your throat on that. But because they can be used um, internally, you can add them to your food and your water and all of that. So, but as I go through the oils, I'll give you I'll give you examples. So that's the three main ways that you use them. In terms of safety, watch your eyes. If you get essential oil in your eye, people tend to rush for water, which is the worst thing you can do because it actually makes the oil penetrate more so it stings more. You're best getting some milk or some carrier oil to flush it out and dilute it more. No um, oils direct in the ear. Um, and just with your hot oils, be, we always just say be careful of your bits. Um, so if you're handling a hot oil, don't go then go to the toilet because um, it may, you know, burn. So just, just, it's common sense. Um, don't bath in your really hot oils. It will burn. You'll, you'll run out jumping. Um, but, yeah, look, they're, they're very safe and just, just those few precautions are best to um, stick to. So it's really hard um, being online because I'm so used to handing oils around and seeing people's reactions as they smell these oils. So if you do have oils already, feel free to smell them as I'm going through them. Um, if not, you're just going to have to pretend how amazing they are. Um, so let's start with peppermint. Um, peppermint is... I call peppermint our uplifting oil. So peppermint's a really good wake-me-up type oil. If you can't wake up in the morning, I've actually got people that have it next to their bed and they'll take a smell of it in the morning. They'll just unscrew it and have a little smell and that helps them wake up because that's what it's designed to do. It's invigorating. Over winter, if you're struggling to get up and if you... In particular, if you're feeling a bit congested, really good idea is to hop in the shower. As the water gets warm, put your foot over the drain hole, drop a couple of drops of peppermint um, on the floor and it creates this beautiful steam of peppermint. It'll help wake you up and it will also help clear all of this area as well. So that's what we use peppermint for. Peppermint is very good at cooling down the body. Now, I am 100% for modern medicine. So if my kids require Panadol or whatever, they get it. But what I love about these oils is that they can be used in conjunction. So if, say, my kids have a virus, but they're not requiring Panadol, they're just feeling warm and they're running hot, what I do is I get a drop of peppermint in some carrier oil and I rub it, rub it on the soles of their feet and it helps the body cool down, okay? That's how I use it personally. 
The other thing that you can do if you're suffering um, from hot flushes or you tend to get red and hot or whatever, you can make up a spritzer, which is one of these. That's a spritzer for those who are unaware. Just with some water, a couple of drops of peppermint, and when you're really warm, shut your eyes so it doesn't go in the eyes and just spray it around your body and you'll cool down. Over summer, we actually keep them in the fridge to make them even cooler. Really good for after sports as well. So peppermint is really cooling to the body. Um, really good for digestive type issues as well. So traditionally, you know, people drink peppermint tea to help with tummy type um, discomfort. So you can use peppermint oil instead. A drop of peppermint oil in some warm water is beautiful. You can rub it on the tummy. Or if you're having peppermint tea and you wanna add to it, just make up your peppermint tea and add a drop of the peppermint oil on top and that will help disperse it. And it's really, really nice for the digestive system. Peppermint. Ants, so if anyone hates creepy crawlies like me, so I'm talking ants, spiders, or anything like that, um, they hate peppermint. So if you actually had ants crawling all over your desk at the moment, I'm at my desk, and I put peppermint oil with my finger and I made a line, you could watch them and they will not go past that peppermint. They will not physically go past it, they're repelled by it, they move away. Um, so use peppermint as a really good natural um, alternative to the barrier type stuff that you can buy at the supermarkets. So what I do is I make up another spray with water and peppermint, but I do it a bit stronger. So I'll add about 10 drops to a 30 ml spray. And I spray where the ants and creepy crawlies come to tip tend to come in. So you know around the window frames and the doors, I just spray once once a week and it keeps them away. You can also, if you're getting them in the kitchen, it's awesome because it's safe. So you can spray and it doesn't matter. The other thing that people do is they actually get a cotton wool ball and they put a few drops of peppermint on and they'll put it in the windows and the doors where spiders and that come through. I can't do that because I have a dog that eats everything. But if you don't, um, or if you don't have kids that will eat it, you can pop them in there and you can use that instead of moss balls as well. So if you're, I know a lot of people at the moment are getting rid of all of their summer clothes and putting them into storage. So instead of your stinky moss balls, cotton wool with peppermint is brilliant, keeps the bugs away and you don't have to rewash your clothes because they smell like old um, moss balls. So, that's some uses for peppermint. I'm just going to grab a drink of water. You can use peppermint in your cooking. So where you would traditionally use peppermint essence, you can use peppermint essential oil. I'm just letting you know that it's really strong. So if a recipe says half a teaspoon of peppermint essence, you definitely do not need half a teaspoon of peppermint essential oil. Start with, um, and yes, someone has done it, um, and it was really, really pepperminty and hot. So start with three to four drops. That's what I say. Start with three to four drops, even two. Um, and if you need more, add more. But it's really, really yummy. There's a beautiful raw peppermint slice. Um, haven't made it for a while. And someone was talking about it yesterday. And I'm like, I'm going to make that on the weekend. So when I make it, I will repost the recipe for everyone. But it's really, really yummy. Right. Second oil I want to talk about is lemon. So that's the one in the yellow bottle. Lemon, when I think of lemon, I think of cleansing. So peppermint uplifting, lemon cleansing. So a lot of people drink um, lemon, they squeeze lemon and they drink it in their water, which is amazing. And I suggest that you continue doing that because what that is doing is that's alkalining the body. The issue with fresh lemon juice is it can actually affect the enamel on your teeth. 
So if you're having fresh lemon juice, um, have it, but go brush your teeth after so that your enamel on your teeth is not affected. The beauty with this lemon essential oil is it's coming from only the skin and the rind of the lemon, which means that you can drink it throughout the day in your water and you don't have to worry about the enamel on your teeth. So what I do, I'll have fresh lemon juice in the morning if it's available, like good quality lemons. But then during the day, I'll add a drop or two of this to my water and I don't have to worry about, about my teeth. If you are having it in your water, always use stainless, stainless steel or glass. If you add this to a, a plastic, especially a... Um, a weak plastic, so not a good quality plastic, what it can do is it can start dissolving the plastic. So we, what we do, we always put this in glass or stainless steel if you're consuming it. Because it's a cleanse, oh, and when you do add it to your water, people are like, oh, am I gonna be like running to the toilet? It's not, it's just a very gentle cleanse on the system. Um, you aren't gonna be running to the toilet. Um, it's just, it's not like doing a detox or anything. It's just very cleansing to the system. What I love during winter is warm water in a mug and I'll add a couple of drops of this and a teaspoon of honey. That's really, really yummy as well, especially if um, your throat's feeling, um, you know, dry or, you know, that type of thing. So, yeah, you can drink it and it's not going to, it's not a detox in that, in that type of regard. Um, diffuse it. Because it's cleansing, it's beautiful to diffuse, to cleanse the air around you. Um, beautiful with peppermint in the mornings, really uplifting. So that's, we use a lot of it in the diffuser. Brilliant, brilliant cleaner. So, I'm slack. So for cleaning, it's basically, I've got some spritzes, but they're a bit bigger. Water and about 10 drops of lemon. And it is the best general purpose cleaner ever, especially in the kitchen. What I do is because when you mix water with essential oil, the essential oil will just sit at the top. I don't know if anyone's realized has seen that. It's like when you put them in the bath, they just sit at the top. So you've got two options. You can shake it like mad every time you use it. Or if you add a tiny pinch of salt, any type of salt, it doesn't matter what type, what that does is it helps disperse the oils through the water. So you're not having to shake it every time. If you don't want to use salt, the other thing you can use is just a drop of dishwashing liquid and it will have the same effect. This is the best stainless steel cleaner ever. And how I do it is I'll use my spray to do the um, oven and all of that. And then I'll just put a little bit of this pure on a little bit of cloth and I'll use that to buff. Um, and it's amazing. And the other thing that I use this for is my sink. So when you get that build up in your sink, um, what I do, I get bicarb. I buy bicarb in bulk from Aussie Soap Supplies. Um, I'll chuck about half a cup of bicarb in the corner of the sink, put a splash of vinegar, add about five drops of this, and it creates a paste. And I basically cover the sink with it, and I'll leave it there for about half an hour. You come back half an hour later and you wipe it off, and it's amazing. It's so shiny and it's like new. So you can make it in a separate bowl and do it that way. But once again, I'm just trying to minimize um, the cleaning up after of the cleaning. So I do it in the actual sink and that works brilliantly every time. So definitely use this for cleaning. Also, I add it to hummus, stir fries, it, it, yogurt. It's really nice in yogurt as well. There's hundreds of uses for all of these oils. I'm just picking out, honestly, about four things that we use them for. We use them for a lot more, but we'd be here till midnight if I um, kept going on about them. Lavender. You know, when I'm in a class, I can guarantee that at least one person, before they smell lavender, they tell me that they don't like lavender because it reminds them of potpourri. 
or it reminds them of an old person. Um, but you honestly, you have to give our lavender a go. I'm not a massive, I was never a massive lavender fan, but this lavender is really different because the lavender that you're used to smelling is lavender that's been mass produced basically. Whereas this lavender, we source it from France where it grows natively. And because we can't keep up with the demand, we're also sourcing it from Bulgaria as well. So this is coming from where lavender is meant to be grown. So it's not your fake potpourri type lavender. It's actually quite, it's very nice, even for non-lavender people. And I wish that you could smell it so that I could prove you wrong that it doesn't smell like old nana. Um, what I use lavender for um, is the skin. Really, really good one for the skin. So any type of skin, skin irritation really good one to use lavender for um, if anyone gets stung by a bee or anything like that lavender goes on it straight away burn sunburn um, you know I'm trying to remain compliant here when you have really dry skin and stuff like that skin think of lavender um, diffuse it it's really, really nice in the diffuser. And the beautiful thing about it is it's calming. But I find that it's not, it's not sleep calming. Although some people will sleep to it. So what I diffuse it with, I diffuse it with a bit of citrus or a bit of frankincense um, to create a more grounding type environment. So lavender, frankincense and wild orange is beautiful and calming and grounding. So it's a really good one for mid-afternoon. Um, really good choice, lavender's a really good choice for babies because it's very, very gentle on the skin. So you can pop it in, pop it in the bath, use it as a massage in some plain lotion. So really good choice for babies. The other really cool thing that I use lavender for is um, I don't know if anyone's got shaken back types or have used in the past where you can buy them from the supermarket and you shake them on your carpets or in your car or whatever and they miraculously, you know, get rid of the smells and you vacuum them. They're actually full of chemicals. So instead what I do is I mix bicarb with lavender and that is my shaken back and I use it for everything. So I just go to, the, um, you know, red dot or whatever, and I'll buy a glass jar. And for about, for every cup of bicarb, I would probably put about five drops of lavender. So if I put a cup of bicarb and five drops of lavender, I shake it up so that it's, the lavender disperses through the bicarb, and I use that as my shake and back. So I've just got like an old sifter thing and you can use it on couches, you can use it on your rugs, you can use it in your car, you can use it in smelly shoes and what I really love it for is mattresses because mattresses are where bed bugs and dust mites and stuff like that hang out. So I'll take the sheets off, sprinkle some on top of the mattress leave it there. I leave it there for most of the day, but as long as you leave it there for a good couple of hours, vacuum it up, and then your mattress smells amazing. Um, and it's helping. There is studies actually that they've done. There's a scientific study that it did actually kill um, a huge percentage of stuff that was on the bed. If you really don't like lavender, you can use other oils. So um, I wouldn't put something like peppermint on your bed because that's uplifting, but something like eucalyptus, um, on guard. If you're a lemongrass fan, you could use lemongrass. Um, cloves are really good one. Bicarb and essential oils, and you have shaken back that you can use for so many things, and it's so much cheaper as well. So that is a really good use for lavender. Tea tree or melaleuca um, cleaning. It reminds me of that clean hospital smell. So it's quite a, yeah, it's, it, that's that clean, clean. That's what comes to my mind when I think of um, tea tree. Tea tree is sourced from Australia, which is brilliant because that's where it comes from natively. Tea tree is, has antibacterial properties. 
So that's what I use it for. So if my kids fall over, um, I'll grab the tea tree out. And the beautiful thing about it is that it doesn't sting. And what I personally do, and I recommend that everyone that has these oils does, is I make up an owie spray. So this is one of our owies. Owie spray is the best spray. Um, it's so good. In here, I put about 10 to 15 drops of lavender, 10 to 15 drops of tea tree, and I personally add about 10 to 15 drops of frankincense and I fill it with carrier oil, so fractionated coconut oil. And it's called owie spray because every time that there's an owie, so every time that someone falls over, gets bitten, you know, um, I don't know, there's a bump, there's a bruise, you know what kids are like? They've got their owie spray and it's there ready so that I'm not having to worry about getting all of those oils out. So the lavender, like I said, you say um, child falls over on the gravel, gravel. you would get the, the owie out and you would spray it. The lavender is really healing for the skin. The tea tree in it, like I was saying, is your antibacterial, antiseptic property. So it's going to clean it out. And I put the frankincense in it because that's also really good for the skin. The brilliant thing is it does not hurt. So if you've ever tried to chase a child who is bleeding with Dettol, good luck. Um, the minute they know that stuff stings, they are miles away. This is an ongoing joke in our house. I have to make up a really diluted version for my daughter because she thinks it's like it's a joke. Um, she'll go, oh, I've got a cut, you know, and she was using so much owie spray that I've made up a diluted one, so it definitely doesn't hurt. Um, so I'd highly recommend that. Recipe for that, if you've forgotten, it's on my page. I must post about it every, um, every month, so it's definitely on the page. So I use tea tree for that. The other thing tea tree is really good for is ear, just, we call it occasional ear discomfort. And by that, I mean, if your child has an ear infection, go to the doctor or do whatever you need to do and get it resolved. This is more for when, again, they've got a virus or you've got a virus and you get that congestion in that ear area and you just want some relief. Tea tree is amazing. Don't put it straight down your ear. What you do is get a little bit in your hand with a bit of carrier oil and then apply it to that bone behind the ear. And you can come around here as well. The other thing that you can do is put a couple of drops on um, a cotton wool ball. And if the child or you will, will lay down, you just put that cotton wool ball, ball here and the essential oil molecules will bounce down the ear canal and pro hopefully provide some relief for you. We do this in summer when the kids get swimmers ear and it's really, really good. Um, tea tree you can also use for your cleaning. You know, you can use it on your, to mop your floors and um, especially if you want that antibacterial, really cleansing type effect. Right, must keep moving. Easy Air would have to be one of my favourite, favourite oils and I posted about this today. This has been a life saviour for our house. Easy Air is our respiratory support blend. Um, so in there you've got things like peppermint and tea tree, um, cardamom, which is another beautiful one for opening up these airways as well. You can pop this in the diffuser um, like you would your traditional vaporizer like you would have. Um, put it in the room and it's even at night time it's really good. At night time you can add a little bit of lavender or something if you prefer just to calm it down a little bit. Some I find with some kids in particular the peppermint and the eucalyptus and that they need that little bit of either lavender or frankincense just to bring it down a bit at night. And you can have that diffusing at night, especially over winter where they're coughing and spluttering. So any type of respiratory um, issue requiring support, this is the oil for you. And it actually smells really, really good. I diffuse this 
all the time, even if we don't have respiratory issues going on, because I find that it really helps clear the air and it's a beautiful smell, especially if you've had like burning going around you or fires or you've got smells going around you or say you've been away on holidays and the house has been, you know, you've got that stuffy, stale air smell, this in the diffuser is amazing. You can also use this one topically for support. So again, I mean, my name should be Slack. I was saying this last week at the Holistic Home event. I just do the easy way. So I just mix it with carrier oil and I apply it to the chest and the feet if I can, if you know if they're not running around I'll put it on the feet followed by socks um, and I do have it ready in a spritzer over winter if you want to be more fancy um, and do something a little bit more you know complicated you can actually make a vapor rub type um, you know um, cream with this oil you can be really fancy and get beeswax and all of that. There are recipes out there. The other way that I've seen it being done is by normal coconut oil, which would be solid at the moment. And what you do is you melt it down. Don't heat it too, too hot. Melt it down. Add your oils so you can add some easier. It's also nice with a little bit of lavender in that as well. And then what it happens is it solidifies again. And you've created that nice vapour thing and you just grab a tiny bit and you rub it here and the smell of the coconut oil um, and the lavender and the easy air and you can add some frankie if you want is really really nice if you can't be bothered making that yourself i swear to doTERRA we're answering my prayers for the slack people like me you can buy it now in a vapor stick so this is the easy air in an actual vapor stick for those that can't be bothered making it themselves. Um, and we use this a lot over winter. This oil is really good for snoring as well. So if you've got any snorers, um, this or the oil with a bit of fractionated coconut oil, particularly under here, um, it works a treat or on the big toe. Big toe for some reason, helps with snoring so um that's another another use for this one right on guard Whew. i don't i'm not even going to open it because i um i on guard is one of those ones where people either love the smell or they're not too keen on the smell i am in the not too keen category actually i really don't like the smell of it but i use this oil so much and I use it because it's our protection blend and it's really, really good if you've got any um, sickness or germs going around. The reason that I find the smell a bit offensive is the clove in it. It's, it's got that clovey, Christmassy smell. But what I do when I'm diffusing it, I will add a little bit of wild orange to it and I find that it balances a bit more. So if you're in the not sure about the smell category like me, um, there's heaps of ways that you can mask the smell. Most people love the smell, so don't take my word for, um, as gospel. I just can't help but be honest. Um, it, I've got a thing about this oil. How I use this is um, you can use this as a preventative health, as a preventative, preventative healthcare measure. Now, during winter, that's what I'll do. I will make up a spray with on guard and carrier oil and we'll pop that on our feet every day um, the kids will just one spray look you can use a roller I just prefer a spray I just find sprays easy one roller um, rubbed on the bottom of their feet and then they'll go off to school and that is purely to help support the immune system fingers crossed if there's stuff going around school, they're less likely to pick it up if their immune system is being supported. You are still going to get sick. Your kids are still going to get sick. No matter how many oils you use, no matter what you do, sickness is a part of life um, and we it's, it's necessity for our immune system and that. So it's not going to prevent you getting sick, but um, what I find is we don't pick up as much 
and when we do pick up something, we, rec we actually get over it really fast. It doesn't seem to, um, you know, turn into, you know, something worse every time. So that's how I use On Guard on the feet every day during winter. And I'll also diffuse it um, during the day, at least well, twice a week. Just to what I'm trying to do by diffusing it is I'm helping kill anything that might be lingering around. And again, it's really good for immune support. And I've got heaps. So if you're not a fan, um, just I might do an actual post on ways that you can make on guard smell not like on guard for the on guard, <laughs> the non on guard people. Um, I'll do a post on that with some diffuser ideas. It's even nice just with a bit of frankincense actually. If we do come down with something, what I'll do is I will, we call it the immune bomb, um, and you will get a recipe for this if you get started. And basically it's on guard, but I also add some Frankie and some lemon to it. So I'm adding some more oils to it, and I'll apply that um, if we get really sick. The other one that I will sometimes add is oregano. And that's when we're really sick. But what I tend to do with oregano is rather than add it to my spray, I just apply it separately. I've got the roller um, and I'll use that when we're real, if, if we get to the point of being really sick. On Guard is also a really good cleaner. Um, and it can replace all of those antibacterial type things. So I've got a hand sanitizer in my bag and it's just water and on guard and a tiny bit of fractionated coconut oil. So I'll use that instead of um, the hand sanitizers that are quite nasty on the skin. Or if we go somewhere and I wanna spray something because it's disgusting like trolleys or whatever, I'll use that. I'll use that if you've got like toys um, that want to be sprayed or high chairs or whatever. On guard, so good for toilets, um, especially those that have boys. Sometimes that smell is so hard to get rid of. But I find because of the clothing on guard, it's really, really good at neutralizing the smells. So you can buy our on guard concentrate cleaner. I use a lot of that, but for the toilets, what I do is I create a toilet bomb, they call it. And again, it's just bicarb with some vinegar and about five drops of on guard and it fizzes up. I do it in like an old jug and I chuck it in the toilet and around, around the whole bowl. And I leave it there for about half an hour and then I clean it. And I find it's really, really good for smells. So that's another really good use um, for On Guard. Definitely one that I would have um, in my house, especially over, over winter, definitely. Right, digestion is tummy. So when you think of digestion, think of tummy. And how you use this is entirely up to you. What I do for my kids is they use it on their actual tummy. And I have a tummy spray. And in that tummy spray, I put digestion and I put carrier oil. And what I personally also add is wild orange. And I add wild orange for two reasons. Firstly, because digestion smells like fennel, which smells like licorice. And if you're still not making the connection. The next one is Sambuca. It smells like Sambuca. So it's quite a strong fennel type smell. So by adding the wild orange, it actually helps, helps with the smell. And I find that young kids in particular are more likely to put it on. The other reason why I add wild orange is because with my kids, especially Jake, sometimes in the morning he'll say, I've got a tummy ache. And I don't know if it's a tummy ache or if it's his nerves or if he's anxious about something. So with that wild orange in the tummy spray or roller, because wild orange is amazing for the nervous system. So if he puts that on his tummy, he's actually helping settle his nerves as well as the tummy. So if it's a tummy ache, he's covered. If it's nerves, he's covered. So I do about... I do about 30 drops digestion to about 10 drops wild orange. And this, it, we use it so much. Um, go clockwise. 
So I've taught my kids. My kids are a bit older. They're 9 and 12, so they can spray it. The reason why we go clockwise is that the bowels go clockwise. So we want to we want to move in the direction of the bowels, especially if you're um, dealing with issues where, you know, you haven't been to the toilet for a while. You want to work with the body, so you go clockwise. I personally find that if I get an upset tummy, I like to take this one internally. So I'll just have a drop in a little bit of water. Um, and if I'm feeling gassy or bloated or, you know, if you've got a bit of indigestion, um, it's really good for that as well. So that's how I use digestin. You will, in the starter packs, you also get um, ice blue or deep blue. And this smells like, I always get told, this one smells like change rooms. So it's that deep heat type of smell. And it's, we call it our soothing blend. So it's a really good one to apply before or after exercise to help those muscles prepare for exercise and also to recover after exercise. It's a pretty hot oil, so it's best diluted in some carrier oil and applied. Um, the good thing about this is though, unlike your traditional, you know, deep heat type creams, it doesn't actually burn the skin. So this one I actually use a lot for kids who are suffering, especially at night from growing pain discomfort. Um, and you can just use deep blue by itself or you can add some lavender as well to help those muscles relax. And what we do with Jake is we'll spray a little bit on his legs before bed and we find that gets him right through the night. If he wakes up during the night, I'll spray it again. Um, but it does, it's not hot. He loves it actually. He likes the feeling. It's sort of that hot, cold feeling, this one. And you can use it for any type of... Um, occasional pain, discomfort, that type of thing, where you would traditionally put a deep heat. For the men, um, it does actually come in a rub, and they love it because this is an essential oils because it's in a rub, even though it is essential oils. This is a bit more potent because it's got menthol in it. Um, so the men tend to like the rub version. I like the oil version and I use it at that time of the month as well. It's really good for cramping. This is what I go to if I've got stomach cramps, that type of thing as well. But it comes in the oil and the cream. Right, we are nearly there. Frankincense. I'm sure you've heard so much about this oil. We call it the king of oils. Um, and most people smell it and they're like, oh, wasn't what, what, what I was expecting, but this oil is the oil that you fall in love with over your essential oil journey. Um, this oil is my favorite oil. When I have those questions, what oil could, what one oil would you choose if you had to choose one oil? It would be frankincense, and it's because it's so good for everything. Google frankincense and you'll be amazed at the research that's going on with frankincense. Really good for overall general health and cellular health. So a lot of people actually will pop a drop under their tongue every morning just for general health. That's what I do. Um, just to maintain, just to help the body and especially the immune system. I find it really good for um, grounding and calming. It's my oil that I go to if I'm, you know, if I'm before any talk, this is the oil you will see me putting on um, because I find it incredibly grounding. I don't find it sleepy. I just find that it just brings me back. I just breathe a lot slower and deeper and it brings me back to the present moment. Um, this, and I put it, I actually apply it to my skin every morning because I really do find that it personally helps with my, helps with my anxiety. Um, really good for, and, and I also apply it to my skin because it's really good for the skin. So <laughs> if you're looking for an anti-aging wrinkle type um, oil to go to, frankincense is the one to go to and that's why we put it in the hourly spray not for the anti-aging obviously 
but because it's so good for the skin. Um, some people just pop a drop in their moisturizer, their body moisturizer, and use it that way. Um, you can also add this to any other oil if you want to enhance the benefits. So if, say, um, Jake's, you know, coughing away and um, I've put easier on him and I feel like he needs, you know, he needs a bit more strength or he needs a bit more, then I'll add some frankincense to it to enhance it and to help with that whole cyst because it's actually good for the whole immune system and everything. So it is the go-to oil. Um, and it's, it's very precious and it's one that you, you do fall in love with as you go along. Slowly, all of my team members, they're like, you've got me, I'm hooked. So, yeah. Oregano. Oregano. Someone said to me, someone was saying that it's the spaghetti bolognese oil. That's what it smells like. It is. You can pop it in your, your um, cooking, like I use it in my soups and my spaghetti for the kids and that. Just be aware, it's really strong. Um, so if you get one extra drop, so if you get two drops instead of one drop, your dish is destroyed. So what I do, I get a toothpick and I put it in the oil, then I put it around the dish um, rather than risking the whole dish if it gets um, two drops in it. This is really powerful for the immune system. So you would have heard me before say that if we're really sick, then this comes out as well as the on guard because it's powerful. There's a bit of um, talk out there about, you know, how safe it is to use um, how many days in a row because it's actually quite, um, it takes a long time for the body to actually get rid of oregano in the system. So what I personally do is I use this for a maximum seven days for me um, and for my kids about three days. But in all honesty, you don't normally need it for that long. So if we're really sick and I've started, you know, with the on guard and that and I'm also applying oregano to their feet, um, I would do that for a max three days. Then I would have a break um, and then if I need more, I would do that. But that's me personally. Um, I prefer to be safer with that. So really good one for the immune system, really good for things like um, warts, skin tags, um, anything like that you can apply this to. Just remember it is hot, um, so dilute it. You can actually use this in, as a really strong cleaner as well. So if you've got anywhere... Say like you're cleaning your, you want to give your chopping boards a really good clean. Um, you can put some oregano um, in some water and use that as a spray. Not too much oregano, but that will give it a really, really good antibacterial type clean as well. So I, I do use it for that as well. You know, when your chopping boards are getting a bit, if you've chopped like raw chicken and that, you can um, do that as well. So basically, they are the um, 10 um, starter oils and the ones that I did want to cover tonight. If you don't have oils in your life yet, oh my God, no, what are you doing? Um, oh, no, only joking. To get those oils, um, you're looking at if you want the full size bottles which is that size um, of the oils, apart from deep blue, which only ever comes in a five mil, it's $330 and you get your diffuser as well. And that gives you your membership with doTERRA as well. A membership is not, um, you're not, people are like, oh my God, what does that mean? mean all it means is that you're getting 25% off retail prices. I call it a VIP wholesale membership. So basically, if you decide down the track that you want to order some more oils, you basically hop online and you can um, order some more oils and you get 25% off. That is what a doTERRA membership is. It isn't about, you know, you signed up for life and you have to order this and, you know, you have to order so much per month and that. There's, yeah, it's nothing like that. If you want those 10 oils but $330 is beyond your budget we do do a smaller version with five mil bottles 
So the smaller size bottles, um, and that's $174. It doesn't come with your diffuser, but you can add your diffuser on. These little beauties are normally $55. They're 10% off for the rest of May, so they're $49.50. If you are gonna get started, the only other thing I would recommend that you add is a bottle of fractionated coconut oil, which is $16.50. The one oil that I haven't talked about, which a lot of my starter recipes have in it is wild orange. Wild orange doesn't come in the starter kits, but if you are going to be joining up, a lot of the people that are doing doTERRA as a business, they will give you a bottle of wild orange as a thank you for signing up. And you need wild orange. Wild orange is joy bubbles in a bottle. Um, and honestly, everyone needs this oil in their life. A really, really good mood lifter beautiful in raw chocolate, yummy in yogurt, um, smells amazing. So don't stress that wild orange isn't in the starter kits because you'll probably get that. Now, if you do want to get started um, and get a membership, it's really easy. What you need to do is you need to go back to your doTERRA contacts. So if you got invited to this by a friend who's a doTERRA person, then please go back and go back and talk to them and they'll sign you up. If you stumbled across this webinar or my page and you don't have anyone that you're working with, send me a message um, and I'll be more than happy to send you more information and get you started online um, and we will give you a welcome pack and everything. I hope that covered most of the stuff on the starter oils. If anyone has any questions, um, I can't see any in the thing, but it may be because I haven't turned it on. Um, and we're past an hour anyway, so I don't wanna keep it going for longer. But if you've got any questions, just flick them on the um, event thing. I hope you enjoyed it all. And um, in a couple of weeks, I'm gonna be doing one on moods as well. And I hope to um, try and do these once every couple of weeks, probably on a Friday night and cover some different topics. So. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night.